Okay, so after many years, I finally return to the Z97 OC formula with LN2, I mean. So uh, I still have about uh, 20 liters of LN2 left, a bit over 20 liters, I think. And I have uh, two important CPUs I want to test. And I want to test at least one of them. So uh, one is the 4790K, which was very good on ambient cooling. And the second one is the very crazy 3770K that was doing like 5.4 on water. So we'll start with this one. So uh, only the CPU, no memories on LN2. So the main focus will be on multi-threaded tests, CDBench, Geekbench, GPU Pi and so on. Maybe W Prime in Windows XP. My Windows XP is actually broken. For some reason I cannot get the formula drive uh, tuning software to work properly. So it will be very hard to run, uh, especially Super Pi in Windows XP. But I might, if the CPU is good enough, I can do a quick attempt in W Prime. So uh, we'll just have to figure out the code bug and uh, see how the CPU does. I think the best one in uh, like Cinebench is uh, 6.2. So I'm using the T-Rex container because it's a better one th than the F1 Dark. I could use the F1 Dark, but I really like the T-Rex more because it's a lot faster. So uh, I'll just keep going. I will use Inferno backplate and I'm not using any Vaseline on the board because there's no need because the Z97 OC formula has the conformal coating already from the factory. So it's just Armorflex, paper towels and the Inferno backplate. But yeah, so I'll get going and uh, let's see how it actually runs in the OS. Okay, so uh, I just dialed in some basic settings. So I'll start at 5.8 on the CPU, 5.5 cache, um, 2800 megahertz on the MEMS. So hold on, so OC tweaking enabled, yes. I'll quickly save these. LN2 4790K 58555-2800 Very basic power chip profile, so 8128 And uh, 1.65 on the V-Core, 1.45 on the cache for starters These have to be very careful uh, On these I have to be very careful, the uh, uh, offset range might be higher with the LN2 mode enabled So uh, the real value might be a bit higher now than what it was on air or water cooling. So I'm aiming for like 1.2 on SA and IO for starters. 2250 on input. Input is very important. So uh, with the very early batch 4770 case, you can go very high on the input voltage, like between 2.6, even 2.8. But uh, that kind of value can often instantly kill many of these newer Devil's Canyon CPUs, like 4790K, G3258, and there's no such scaling on these CPUs as with the original Haswells. So be very careful. Do not go too high on the input voltage with the uh, Devil's Canyon. Something like 2250, uh, 2.4 volts is good. I'll start with 2250 for now. One is two, one's 102. So uh, cold buck range is one between 110 and 140. The best chips should be around one, minus 140. So see, when I said 3.5, it actually said like plus 400 on the system agent. And uh, yeah, inputs a bit higher. So I might put something like 1.37 for now. And let's boot. So, uh, post is, the pot is nice and frosty. 136 on the meter and mouse is still moving. So that's how it's usually done. So we'll just look at the temperature meter. One, uh, 138 still moves. So this is a very good cold bug already, using KPX thermal paste, by the way. So the thermal pastes have improved a lot since those days. One forty now and still moves. Now it hangs. So spot on one forty, minus one hundred forty. That's a very good cold bug, considering we are using KPX 
thermal paste. Okay, so the cold bug of the CPU is, I mean the cold pool bug of the CPU was minus 126. So it's quite a bit warmer than the actual cold bug. Usually with Haswell and these CPUs, the difference is only like uh, maybe something like 5 degrees. So I'm at, I will keep the temperature close to cold bug now, so 136 and use uh, Sleevens R15 for uh, initial testing. So uh, we can do a very quick run at 5.8, it should pass easily. So 5.8, 1.65 volts, V core 2.250 on the input. But controlling this CPU with uh, or overclocking the CPU with the Kimpin Cooling T-Rex is a very easy job. This uh, pot is absolutely awesome. It's my favorite. Sadly, I cannot use it on 775 because it's too large for most of the 775 ports. So, uh, 1196, I don't know what's the top score. It's, I think it's 12 something. I'm not, not, but not sure at all. I need to check. Just check that no values are being set to weird values and let's do uh, 60 and 56, same voltage and so on. So we have 60. Colder again. Uh, and we crashed. So it's not a good sign. Not a good sign. Not happening. Yeah, now it's running a lot better. So, uh, yeah, definitely do not use the LN2 mode on the Z97 OC formula. Has to be that, not uh, thermal based cracking, but it's either the LN2 mode or the thermal based cracking. So there's a lot of voltage overshoot when you use uh, the LN2 mode. So now running 6 gigahertz just fine. Even 5.8 started crashing. 5.8 started crashing. Uh, uh, in uh, that previous attempt. So now 6155, very low voltages. So let's try. I'll do one splash, I'm at minus 127. Yeah, because I was absolutely certain that the CPU cannot be that bad when uh, the uh, when uh, 58 crashes instantly it cannot be that bad considering how good the CPU is on uh, water oh we crashed so now I'll work on this more okay so that's the uh, shared rank one score in R15 with the 4790k very hard CPU to run so it was harder, a lot harder than what I expected. So 6170, previous top score by Jokot from uh, Finland, somewhere around 6.2 something. So I'm lower on frequency, but same performance. So uh, I'll try a tiny bit more and get the rank one score. Okay, so that's finally the rank one score in R15. Very, very tight result because my CPU isn't super good. So this is the def this is definitely the maximum uh, core frequency I can run. So 1287, two points higher than the score made by Chokot. And IMC has issues if I try to run MEMS well beyond 2800 megahertz. 
and cache is 5.9 max so that's pretty much it yeah okay so the uh, last tests with the 4790k didn't really go that well the only top score i managed to get was the rank one score in cinebench r15 1287 points previous top score 1285 by chokot but at much higher frequency at 6.26 gigahertz so i was uh, almost 100 megahertz lower cpu frequency but i managed to take down the top score in that so it's a very nice result and the third the third highest score well well the current third highest score made by extreme addict uh, is also above 6.2 but that one is with uh, modified cdbench files so that's technically uh, an invalid score so it's saying i tried r11.5 but nah i there's no way of going like 13.8 uh, points or something like that so uh, sadly the cpu didn't go that higher i was expecting the cpu to do at least 6.2 as it was very nice on water so uh, a very sad thing but 4790k is a lot harder to estimate compared to 4770k and those error screens that for example cinebench gives they are usually uh, common with the 4790k they don't really happen on the 4770k so with 4770k the test either passes or it blue screens so that's the main difference so 4770k is a lot better cpu to run overall and a lot more convenient to bench so just saying the IMC was quite flaky at 2800. It can do it, but uh, it was uh, it was it was quite unstable. So I dropped the memory multiplier to 2666, and it obviously went up with the base clock. So yeah, sadly I didn't have more LN2. So uh, there's still the very awesome 3770K to test, but uh, at least the 4790K is now tested properly, like completely maxed out. So uh, there's really uh, no way to go higher. I really don't know why the Z97 OC formula starts to overshoot the voltages because even without the LN2 mode it uh, started to overshoot the voltages uh, without uh, doing any uh, settings. I didn't enable the extreme voltage mode or anything. So uh, like in the initial post settings it was, uh, uh, it was uh, running the voltages at the set values roughly and then it started overshooting again so it's not it's, so it's not very convenient so i'm not fully sure what's going on but doesn't really matter at least it's tested 4790k r50 top score is quite nice result as that cpu was very popular so uh, uh, it's not easy to take down a score like that one other cpu would be the g325a penium but it's very hard to bin those they are very very hard cpus to bin because even if you find a decent one on water there's no guarantee that it will be good on ln2 and the same thing was with the 4790k even if it's a very golden one on water it might be very bad on ln2 so uh, they it's very hard to estimate the scaling but yeah so uh, that's pretty much the end for now and that's the end for this whole session so uh, yeah thanks for watching uh, my uh, latest uh, ln2 overclocking adventures and i will see you on the next one